Hi everybody, it's Mike from Tilesport here to talk to you today about how to change the spring pack in your Tile MVI 2.5 wastegate. The 2.5 actuator we're going to deal with today has a straight wastegate stem. If your wastegate actuator has a bent stem, we will discuss that in a different video. The key focus here is to extend the stem to unload the spring pack safely so that the springs can be removed, the diaphragm changed if necessary, and the unit reassembled with no damage to the wastegate actuator and no danger to the operator. We also wanted to demonstrate that this could be done with materials that you may have in your workshop already. So to that end, we actually just rummaged around and found a few pieces that would do the job. For example, we knew that the length we needed was about two and a half inches. I found a two and a half inch long eighth inch pipe nipple just laying around. And by laying that over the end of the stem and coming in contact with the inboard washer, I was able to engage the threads of the stem without any trouble. You can do this with a free running nut, again, of the thread size of the stem. In this case, it's quarter 28. I just happen to have this fancy nut with a knob on it, but you could do that with a standard hex nut or even a wing nut. And ultimately, what we're doing is we're drawing the stem out of the canister until we get the spring unloaded. And you'll be able to tell when it's unloaded pretty easily because ultimately, things will get very loose here. And ultimately what that means is we've collapsed the spring and we can safely disassemble the actuator. The locking collar threads onto the top cover, so it is going to loosen by turning the locking collar clockwise. Once you do that, the locking collar will come loose. You can remove the top cover. You can remove the diaphragm assembly. And then you can remove that lower collar, that locking collar and get it out of your way for now. And you can see that the spring has been completely collapsed inside to a safe spring rating that allows us to work. Now, if we wanted to change to a sp stiffer or looser spring, the MVI is designed to use four springs that give you a range of 2 to 22 PSI of available preload. Right now, we're using a very weak spring, but you could very easily nest the rest of the springs. And once we disassemble this to actually remove the spring, Removing our spacer, removing the lower housing, removing the ceiling washer and the lower spring cup. You can see exactly how the springs engage. There is a groove structure inside for the different diameters of springs. In this particular case, we're just going to simply change to this middle spring. This is a 6 PSI spring, by the way. So once we do that, we're going to reassemble in the order of disassembly, reverse order. engage that extended and exposed thread. And we're simply going to work this assembly down until we've compacted this spring as well so it can work safely with the diaphragm. It doesn't take very long at all and again even if you were using a nut and a wrench or a nut and a ratchet you can see it doesn't take very long. We've compacted that spring. That allows us to safely drop that diaphragm into place. We can bring our locking collar back into play here. Make sure you remove any debris that might accumulate around the edge of the diaphragm. You don't want to pinch that in place. And I found in the field it's much easier to thread the top cover into the ring than to thread the ring into the top cover. Once you get the cover down fairly snug, you can align the logo artwork if that's important to you and simply draw that collar nice and snug. This does not need a tool. Ultimately, the spring loading inside of it will prevent the locking ring from coming loose. It does not need sealant and it does not need any sort of lubricant either. Once you get to that point, you can then unload the spring pack again. Your actuator is reassembled. Slightly stiffer spring this time. 
we're going to bring this regulator into place and just check the wastegate actuator to make sure it's working correctly. We don't recommend using a hand pump to test wastegate assemblies because the volume needed to do this job is generally not easy to accumulate with a hand pump. Compressed air, regulated, is the safest way to do this. And it's the way we also test our external wastegate actuators and you'll see that in other videos too. We're going to connect a hose to the actuator fitting. We're going to put a clamp in place just to keep air leaks to a minimum. And ultimately we're going to monitor our gauge and we're going to apply pressure to the regulator. In this particular case you're going to turn it clockwise. And ultimately we know that this is about a 6 psi spring so we're going to start to look for movement to occur at about 6 psi. Now you'll notice that I have two gauges. The reason I have two gauges is because one is more accurate than the other to lower pressure. The other one is accurate to higher pressure. In this case I want to see the lower pressure and a better graduation. So I'm just going to bring this up. Without the actuator connected to the turbocharger, it's difficult to calculate the length. Normally what we would do is tell you to measure this distance with a dial indicator, but to test the actuator to make sure you've done the job correctly, if you just place your finger up against it and you rotate the regulator in order to add air, you'll feel the actuator move. And what you're looking for is travel that is consistent with the spring pack. In this case, I'm seeing travel at about 6 psi on my gauge, and then I can extend the actuator fully by about 16 psi. We know nothing's leaking. We know that the wastegate actuator is moving smoothly and clean. We know this wastegate actuator is going to go onto the engine and work correctly. So we can disconnect it from our shop air. Connect the hose. Set our tools aside for another time and your actuator is ready to go into place. If you have any trouble or if you have any questions about how this is done, and or if you need any assistance in locating these items that we find to be fairly common, feel free to drop us a line at tech at tilesport.com.